While the Los Angeles Lakers might have a dilemma about which Kobe Bryant jersey to retire, whether the number 8, number 24, or both, the Denver Nuggets might have somewhat of a similar problem as well. They don't have to retire two numbers worn by the same player, but a very special number 15, which in the 2000s was known as Carmelo Anthony's number, while from the mid to late 2010s, it became Nikola Jokic's. Let's start from the beginning. In the 2003 NBA draft, Denver's number 15 jersey was given to a player that the franchise hoped to be their guy for years to come, Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo was chosen with the third overall pick in a stacked draft class, coming off of a phenomenal 2002 NCAA season with Syracuse. Carmelo led an unranked Syracuse basketball squad to their first ever NCAA national championship. He led the team in scoring, rebounding, minutes played, and field goals made. The hype was great around Carmelo, and he didn't waste any time to prove his talents. In just his sixth NBA game, in a matchup against the LA Clippers, Carmelo Anthony became the youngest player to score 30 points in an NBA game. This was the fewest games that it had taken a Nuggets rookie to score 30 points. By February 2004, he had already scored his 1,000 career point, becoming the third youngest player to do so. Things were looking good in Denver. Carmelo was playing amazing as he led the Nuggets in scoring and his efforts were enough for Denver to end the regular season as the eighth seed, which was a big turnaround from the previous record of 17 and 65. In the years that followed, both Carmelo and the Nuggets were improving. Melo was breaking all kinds of Denver records and the Nuggets were winning more and more games with each season. In the 2006-2007 season, Melo made his first All-Star appearance. The Nuggets figured that they had a good chance of making a bigger run, and tried making some moves in order to improve the roster. Denver became a consistent playoff team and even started winning 50 games in a stacked Western Conference. However, despite having great records, it was that the stacked Western Conference was always in their way of achieving something greater in the playoffs. Carmelo and the Nuggets got eliminated in the first round of the playoffs for five straight years, and they were getting beaten badly. However, once the 2008 season rolled around, the Denver Nuggets were looking more serious than ever. Carmelo once again had a great year, averaging 22.5 points and 6.5 rebounds on 44% shooting from the field and 37% from three. He also got a bunch of helping hands as Chauncey Billups arrived from Detroit in a trade for Allen Iverson, as well as Kenyon Martin, Junior Smith, and Nenny Hilario, who had the best season of his career. Denver went for 54 and 28, ending the regular season as the second seed and looking for blood in the playoffs. The Nuggets beat both the New Orleans Hornets and the Dallas Mavericks in five games, and Melo was feeling better than ever, having lifted the gorilla from his back. In the Western Conference Finals, however, the Nuggets matched up against an even more motivated Kobe Bryant-led Lakers squad, who dismantled them in six games. Although this was a tough blow for the team, it was also a big step in the right direction. In the following season, Carmelo was looking better than ever, finishing the year with a career-high 28.2 points per game average, as well as leading the Nuggets to another 50-win season, this time finishing 53-29. and 29. However, despite having great regular season success, once again the Nuggets were eliminated in the first round by the Utah Jazz. And this is when Anthony's dissatisfaction started to show, as more and more trade rumors started to spread. Carmelo refused to sign a contract extension, but he still started the 2010 season as a Denver Nugget. However, in February 2011, he was traded alongside Chauncey Billups to the New York Knicks in a multiplayer deal. February 22, 2011 is the day that the Carmelo era in Denver officially ended. For the purpose of this video, these are the years from Carmelo's career that we are going to keep focus on. During his time as a Nugget, Melo managed to save basketball in Denver, he led the Nuggets to two division titles and their first Western Conference Final. Before Carmelo's arrival, the Denver Nuggets hadn't had a winning season since 1994. He was a three-time All-Star, made the All-NBA second team, and broke all kinds of Nuggets scoring records. He was a fan favorite who brought the excitement for basketball back to Denver. However, when he left the Nuggets and joined a 29-win Knicks team, fans seemed to instantly forget everything that he had done for the franchise. What followed for Denver in the next couple of seasons was not affected by Carmelo's departure. The Nuggets were still playing good, despite never making much noise in the playoffs. 
However, with a rooster good enough to not be a lottery pick but not good enough to make a serious push in the playoffs, the Nuggets were finally fed up and decided to blow things up so they can start from scratch. They started their tanking era in the 2012 season, which ironically was one of Melo's best years as a Nick. In the 2014 NBA draft, the Nuggets got their lottery pick and drafted Doug McDermott at the number 11 spot, hoping for the best. And they did get the best possible outcome. However, not from Doug. Little did Denver know that the guy they chose with the 41st overall pick during a Taco Bell commercial would change the franchise's reputation forever. Nikola Jokic, who was almost an anonymous player at the time, was the Nuggets' second-round draft pick, who eventually got to wear the legendary number 15, previously owned by Carmelo Anthony. A move that Melo took to heart. Despite getting drafted ahead of the 2014 NBA season, Nikola decided to stay in Serbia for one more year. He had a great season, and his efforts earned him the Adriatic League MVP, as well as the league's top prospect award. After this season, he joined Denver in the summer of 2015 for the Summer League, alongside the most recent lottery pick, Emmanuel Moudier. After a promising five-game performance in the Summer League, Jokic signed a contract with the Nuggets and was officially an NBA player. As a rookie, despite being a little unfamiliar with NBA basketball, the Joker showed real promise. He ended the season averaging 10 points and 7 rebounds in around 20 minutes of game time. He did so on great shooting splits, especially for a rookie, and his efforts were more than enough for Nikola to be named part of the all-rookie first team. The Nuggets were still pretty bad, though, finishing as the 11th team in the Western Conference. However, people in Denver had plenty of stuff to be happy about. In the 2016 NBA draft, the Nuggets got the seventh pick in the lottery through a pick swap, which was a part of the Carmelo Anthony deal. If that is not interesting enough, that pick ended up being Jamal Murray, who became Jokic's running mate for the years to come. And you could instantly see the improvement. Just the following season, the Nuggets won 46 games led by Nikola and Jamal. They barely missed the playoffs that year, losing in the last game of the season against the Minnesota Timberwolves. This was the first time in 21 years that the last game of the season was a play-in decider. Jamal was part of the all-rookie second team, and Nikola Jokic became the clear franchise guy, getting his first double-double season of his career. In the 2018 season, Denver was back to being a 50-win team winning 54 games. They were the second seed in a tough Western Conference, and Nikola's game had improved even more. He finished the season with a 20.1 points and 10.8 rebounds per game averages, got his first All-Star appearance and was named All-NBA First Team, a feat that Carmelo was never able to accomplish. Nikola and the Nuggets seemed ready for his first playoff appearance. In the first round of the playoffs, the Nuggets faced the seventh-seeded San Antonio Spurs, who were in their first season without Kawhi Leonard. However, they did have LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan, surrounded by great veteran players. Jokic had a playoff debut for the record books, finishing Game 1 with a 10 points, 14 rebounds, and 14 assists triple-double, becoming only the fourth player to record a triple-double in their playoff debut, and the first one after LeBron James himself. The Spurs took the Nuggets to seven games, but Denver managed to overcome that hurdle, getting their first playoff series win in the post-Carmelo Anthony era. They lost to the Portland Trailblazers in the second round in seven games, but this was still a big jump for the Nuggets as well as Nikola Jokic. Since then, the Joker has been a consistent all-star and all-NBA player. However, we still had not seen all of Nikola's potential. In the 2020 NBA season, Nikola Jokic won his first MVP award and became the first Denver Nuggets player to win the award in the franchise's history. Nikola became the lowest drafted NBA MVP and the first center to win the award since Shaq. Denver basketball never looked so promising. However, despite having a phenomenal regular season, the Denver Nuggets were disappointingly swept by the Phoenix Suns in the second round. Despite Jokic's heroic efforts, in the 2021 NBA season, despite the Nuggets winning one more game, they ended the season as the sixth seed in the West. However, the Nuggets played phenomenal basketball orchestrated by Nikola, who seemingly broke every record imaginable. He finished the season averaging 27.1 points, 13.8 rebounds, and 7.9 assists, which was more than enough to win him his second NBA regular season MVP honor. This was an amazing season for Nikola. 
and the only thing that could put the cherry on top for him was winning the ultimate prize, the Larry O'Brien Trophy. That wouldn't happen during his second MVP season as well, as the Nuggets were eliminated by the eventual champions Golden State Warriors in the first round. However, you could sense it in the air that the Denver Nuggets were about to make the run of their life. In the 2022-23 NBA season, they did just that. Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets won their first NBA championship in the 2023 NBA playoffs, and Jokic led the way throughout all four rounds, ultimately winning the finals MVP award as well. This was Denver's first championship in the franchise's history. This championship run ultimately defined Nikola Jokic's legacy once and for all. Everything after this run will only be an extra in certifying him as one of the greatest players of all time, and undoubtedly the greatest number 15 in Denver Nuggets history. If giving the number 15 to Nikola Jokic in 2015 felt like it was disrespect to Carmelo Anthony, today that is nowhere near the case. Carmelo was undoubtedly the Nuggets' biggest ever superstar while he was on the squad. He brought back the fans and the enthusiasm for Denver basketball. The team was winning and all the games were packed with fans. However, that was about it. Once Carmelo left the Nuggets, it seemed like the number 15 would eventually go to the rafters. However, it did not turn out that way. Although there was no number 15 in Denver for a couple of seasons, once Nikola arrived, he was handed the number 15, a number that he has worn throughout all of his career, way before the NBA. This obviously bothered Carmelo, and it seems like he still holds a grudge when talking about this situation today. In a podcast appearance, a delusional Carmelo Anthony went out and talked about the Nuggets giving the number 15 to Nikola. This is the narrative that they put out there. He wanted to leave. He wanted to do this. He, you know, he wasn't. Nah, but why would you disrespect by even offering that? Like the, that, that, the disrespect and you offering that show me that you just wanted to erase everything that came prior to That's crazy. that right there. Melo feels like the decision about giving Nikola the number 15 jersey was because the front office wanted to erase everything regarding Carmelo Anthony's Denver Nuggets legacy and that Nikola found himself in the middle of that. Y'all think it's a disgruntled athlete and don't want to be here, spoil you athlete. So y'all born because of that based off what somebody is writing in the paper. Because it was a paper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You write newspaper articles then. So you run, you running with that. And then you see me and George ain't on the same page. You, you get all of this. So now you start to pick a side. And y'all put Jokic in the middle of that. He don't know. He don't even on. care. <laughs> or he might, he could have been like, I want to wear 15 because of, he could have been like, oh, I want to, oh, 15 is here. I can wear 15. Oh, that's Melo's number. You know what I mean? Like just pay homage. I don't know. He could have wore because he wanted to pay homage. Right. But what I believe is that they gave him 15 to try to erase what you did on what I your did accomplishments over there. That's that. crazy. Yeah. Cause yo, because like, now it's like they want you to play that game. When you think of 15 in Denver, now to this generation, you thinking it's Joker. Joker. 100%. And there's no hard, there's nothing towards that. It's just, it was two different generations. Yeah, y'all wasn't there. Right? So that just goes to show me that y'all not passed that moment. It seems like Carmelo still hasn't let this one go. Going from a fan favorite to a persona non grata is rough. And Melo has felt that on his own skin by the team and fan base that gave it all to him. And he gave it his all as well, but his all did not come anywhere near. What the Joker managed to achieve in Denver. Not to take anything away from Carmelo, he was amazing and what he did was great. But there is a big but. Carmelo Anthony was never the best player in the league. Not during his Denver days nor after them. He never led the Nuggets to playoff success on the level that Nikola has. The furthest that Melo and the Nuggets went was the conference finals, and they did that just once. Melo was never an all-NBA first team member. And while his disappointment is more so in the line of Denver giving his number to an unknown second rounder, that second rounder exceeded everyone's expectations and even surpassed Carmelo's achievements. If anything, Nikola proved that every human being, let alone a basketball player, is replaceable. Not only are they replaceable, but the following generations might even overshadow them with their accolades and success. While Melo still holds a grudge, it is unfair to talk in such ways and rewrite history because it was his decision and his decision only to leave the franchise. He went to the Knicks and moved on. So did the Nuggets, but not the fans. 
The fans who booed Carmelo had every right to do so because, yes, Carmelo was dropping 40, 50, and 60 points, but he was scoring them for other teams, not Denver. Yes, it might have been a bit disrespectful to give away his jersey number, especially when you consider the fact that he was unanimously the Nuggets' most iconic player ever at the time. But they moved on, just like he did. And this raises another question. Is Melo hurt solely by the Nuggets giving away his number 15? Or is he mad because the new number 15 surpassed his status as the greatest Nuggets player ever? We bring this question up because Nikola Jokic was not the first guy to wear the number 15 after Carmelo left. He was actually the second guy, the first player to wear the number 15 shirt after Melo was actually Anthony Randolph, who you might have never even heard of, as he, despite spending seven years in the league, never had much of an impact on any team, let alone the Denver Nuggets, where Randolph played a total of 87 games. So while Carmelo has every right to feel the way he does, he needs to stay objective and consistent as well. He did not talk much on the topic, if at all, while Anthony Randolph was wearing the number, but he does now when Jokic is. Maybe he did not talk much about it in the past because he was still an active player, but whatever the case may be, his story does not fully add up. At the end of the day, both Carmelo and Nicola have left a lasting impression in the Denver Nuggets history books. One was amazing during his time there, and the other one is still writing his all-time great story. No matter what the Nuggets decide to do with the number 15 jersey, Carmelo will probably have to wait to see his jersey being fully retired because even if the Nuggets decide to retire his jersey soon, Nikola will most likely keep wearing it. On the other hand, if they wait for Jokic to end his playing career first and then retire the number 15, that is probably going to take over a decade to happen, as Nikola is currently in his prime years and yet to hit 30. Whatever they decide on doing, Greatness should be appreciated and no feelings should get in the way of doing so. Carmelo Anthony may hold a grudge, but it is best to let this thing go and reminisce about the good times, while also appreciating the greatness that we get to see by the current Denver Nuggets number 15.